Good morning. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> Any of the fathers here? Stand up. Stand up if you're a dad. How about a granddad? Any granddads? You too. You've been busy. Yeah, he's been busy. Yeah. And a great grandfather. Yay. How about anyone here who has been in a dad's role? Yeah, like a mom or a grandma, you fulfilled the dad's role. Yeah, great, okay. Well, happy Father's Day to all of you. Thank you for everything that you've done for our kids. Well, welcome. It's a beautiful day. It's a little chilly where I live, but uh, I actually closed all my windows last night. Um, but I'm glad you're all here, and I'm really glad to be here. This service is one that we hear that is heard on the last Sunday in New You churches all over the country. And some of you may, most of you probably already know the history, um, but some of you may not. And I'm going to tell the story again, the same story again. <laughs> I hope that's okay. Um, I do have two announcements, but if there's anyone else who has uh, announcement first, please. Okay, my announcement is ordination, August 13th, 2022, 1 p.m., Hubbardston First Church Unitarian of Hubbardston. 
It's on Main Street. Um, anybody here is welcome. All of you are welcome. So, and I think third, the, third time, the third time is going to be a charm. Um, Let us give thanks for a bouquet of people. We give thanks for children like tulips and iris. They multiply around us, making the world ever more filled with color and beauty and life. May we bless them as they replant themselves even further from us, knowing that they need their own space to grow in. We give thanks for generous, generous friends as constant in bloom as echinacea and whose gifts lift up our body and our spirit. We give thanks for feisty friends as indomitable as geraniums and for continuous friends who like bittersweet and ivy hold on and never let go and can never be gotten rid of. <laughs> for crotchety friends as prickly as rose bushes their beauty a secret that is only discovered through careful gardening. For surprising friends who at first glance seem dour and then blossoms into joy as quickly as forsythia. For funny friends, silly as snapdragons and serious friends, complex as chrysanthemums. For comfortable friends, their gentle presence as soothing as the sweet smell of lilacs. For stormy weather friends who stand by us in hard times, like the lily of the valley that cannot be deterred by shade or shadow. For old friends, nodding like sunflowers in the evening time and young friends coming on fast as flocks. For friends as unpretentious as dogwood, as persistent as pachysandra, as steadfast as azalea, and who, like snowdrops, can be counted on to see you through the winter and remind you that spring always comes. For loving friends who wind around us like wisteria and embrace us, despite our blights, wilts, and witherings. And finally, for forget-me-not friends, gone but never forgotten. Their beauty lives on in our memories and in our hearts. For this bouquet of people who brighten our lives in each of their own way, we give thanks. Blessed be. And now please rise for our doxology, sung to the hymn number 370.
Affirmation number 471. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve human need, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other and with God. Now please join me in our antiphonal reading. May the blessing of the flowers be upon you. And their loveliness lure you each day. May their delicate petals make you gentle. And may their stems make you sturdy and they're reaching make you can. Amen. Now rise and join us in our hymn number 44. It is this time of year when the myriad of colors of nature, the 
purple irises, the pink and red roses, multicolored impatiens, pansies, petunias, and the leafy greens of lily of the valley that dot our landscapes are a reminder of Reverend Norbert Chocolate, the man who brought Unitarianism to his homeland, Czechoslovakia, in the early 1920s. The Flower Communion was born from complaints of the Prague Unitarian Congregation called the Prague Congregation of Liberal Religious Fellowship. Just as the diversity of the flowers and the diversity of the friends in today's invocation and the diversity of fathers in this room and fathers that you'll hear about later and the fact that this is June Pride Month. So let's talk about diversity there. And of course, Juneteenth also. So just as all of that comes and merges, somebody like me, it's like, well, what am I gonna talk about today? There's so many topics, but I think we can put them all together. But just like all of that diversity, Chopic, Chopic's congregation was about diversity. It was 1923, the church was only a year old and it was typical of the early Unitarian churches, even those in the US. Chopic was a rational man. He veered away from the Catholic and Baptist traditional fundamental belief systems that he'd been a part of most of his life. What was presented at his Unitarian church was the uncomplicated, free-thinking humanism of the times. There was nothing fancy about the services, no robes, no hymns, no ritual, no dogma, just lectures. He came to realize, however, through the requests for more from the very subtle grumble that people not only need their minds fed, but also their hearts. Perhaps folks were missing the ritualistic aspects of the other religions. And so they complained. There was not enough spirituality. From this call, their reverend and founder of their church created the flower communion. Now he wondered fretfully for a while how he was going to bring his Jewish, Catholic, Christian, diverse congregants under one spiritual umbrella. Something to show that they, all, that they had all made the right choice to live within this inclusive faith. Yet with his, this beautiful response, he responded, he answered their call. With, with this beautiful response, he answered their call. He opened up the Unitarians to a form of worshiping from their hearts, and he showed them community long before the merger of the Unitarians and the Universalists, long before the Universalists brought their more spiritual way to our movement. He was a Baptist minister who came to the US in 1914 to avoid repercussions from the Austrian authorities and his Baptist colleagues, whom he had separated from. His preaching and writings were becoming too liberal and anti-Catholic. He feared for the safety of his family and of himself. In America, he was tried for heresy by the Slovakian Baptists, but eventually took a pastorate at the first Slovak Baptist in New Jersey. He went back, he went back to and then left the Baptists three or four times wanting to serve people in their religious life, but struggling with the traditional understandings. As he continued to find his leanings becoming more and more liberal, he left the Baptists for good. And with much fortune, he and his family found Unitarianism at the first Unitarian in Orange, New Jersey. Chopic had found what he had been looking for, the belief system he found himself leaning toward more and more over the years. He also found support from the American Unitarian Association. The war had ended. Czechoslovakia was now independent. Chopic and his wife, Maya, who would later become an ordained Unitarian minister, wanted to go and introduce Unitarianism back home. They wanted to carry this unique message to their brethren. So it was 1921 when they returned to Prague. 
and formed the Prague Congregation of Liberal Religious Fellowship. They held church in a restaurant and business rooms until years later, with the help of the AUA, they bought and refurbished a medieval palace on Charles Street by the base of the Charles Bridge. It was named Unitaria. And in 1930, the Unitarian Church of Czechoslovakia was officially recognized by the Czech government. This was huge. Later, as the Germans began to occupy Czechoslovakia, it became clear that it, they, it would be invaded. Maya left Prague to lecture and raise funds for Czech relief. After arriving back in the U.S., she also served as minister to the first Unitarian in New Bedford. Not too far from here, right? For three years. It was she who first introduced the flower communion to this country at the Cambridge Unitarian Church. Norbert stayed behind to continue his ministry, but was thwarted when he was arrested for listening to foreign radio this wasn't usually the worst offense. Generally, a little jail time was the punishment. But as time went on, his anti-Nazism was noticed more and more. From what seems like a few mistakes and occurrences of unfortunate events, he was eventually brought to Dachau, where amongst the horrors of this time, he managed to keep his faith, teaching inspirational songs and singing with other prisoners as they walked around their blocks. His life-giving influence in the concentration camp became too much. He died there in 1942. It wasn't until after the war that this news got to the US and to his wife. The AUA president at the time, Frederick May Elliott, called him another, and I quote, heroic Unitarian martyr by whose death our freedom has been bought." Unquote. The Prague Unitarian community with its free thinking, uncommon religious understanding became an important influential part of the society, providing a non-traditional concept of personal belief and religion between World War I and World War II. It became a mega church of some 3,200 members. Many attempts by the Nazis to dissolve the congregation uh, along with its influence was unsuccessful. The community made it through the war and communism together. Today, Charles Street is busy with tourists, shops, lots of busyness. An old medieval palace is now a black box theater. Chopik's congregation lives on though, doing church in a different space around the corner. Theirs is much like the typical UU church offering sermons, joys and concerns, music, religious education, inspiration, shared thinking and service to the world. Norbert Chopek was a Unitarian through and through, even though he spent many years of his life as a Catholic and then a Baptist. He had the exact right temperament the understanding that in life we are called to action, to stand up for our beliefs, even if it causes dissension, to provide a home in our lives and in our hearts for others like us. He never gave up on the faith and ideals of Unitarianism. Even in Dakar, with his composing of music so all could sing loud and clear, and in his final days, his writing of this final prayer it is worthwhile to live and fight courageously for sacred ideals. Oh, blow these evil, the evil winds into my body's fire. My soul, you'll never unravel. He knew too that we are called to quiet, reverent community. This he learned from a congregation which needed it. He transformed a group of people that came together because they were outliers who thought alike into a community of people who cherished each other enough to want to share their spirituality together. When he saw the vase of flowers on his chancel, he saw gifts of beauty brought from one person to give to another. Each flower was unique, just as each person was, just as his adopted faith, our faith is. 
With this celebration also comes awe in Reverend Norbert Chopik's strength and fearless dedication to the beliefs and the power of diversity and of community. Strength and fearless dedication may we all have. In the midst of the two world wars, his flower community lived on, bringing beauty and soulful community to people during that historically challenging time in our nation's history. The community, although apart with so, different faith, so many different faith beliefs and life stories, bravely stayed together, very bravely, offering their love, their commitment, their hope, and their prayers in service to one another into a whole new world in a new way, but an old way they came together as we do today. My friends, during this unusual and difficult time in our history, let us be grateful for the power of our, for the power our earth still has to push forth beauty and color. Let us be grateful for the innumerable communities of people that have found each other in support during the past few years. A lot has changed. People have found different ways to do things, but people have still found ways to be together. Let us remember always that the strength of Reverend Chopik's, both Norma, Norbert and Maya, carried our faith with new beauty into the new world. And now we have the mantle. You have carried it well these past few years by continuing with creativity and dedication to do church, by keeping this community together. I say, bless you all. Amen. Okay. Let us praise those fathers <laughs> who have striven to balance the demands of work, marriage, and children with an honest aware of both joy and sacrifice. Let us praise those fathers who, lacking a good model for a father, have worked to become a good model. Let us praise those fathers who, by their own account, were not always there for their children, but who continue to offer those children now grown their love and support. Let us pray for those fathers who have been wounded by the neglect and hostility of their children. Let us praise those fathers who despite divorce have remained in their children's lives. Let us praise those fathers whose children are adopted and whose love and support has offered healing. Let us praise those fathers who has stepfathers freely choose the obligation of fatherhood and earn their stepchildren's love and respect. Let us praise those fathers who have lost a child to death and continue to hold that child in their heart. Let us praise those men who have no children but cherish the next generation as if they were their own. And let us praise those men who have fathered us in their role as mentors and guides. Let us praise those men who are about to become fathers. May they openly delight in their children. And let us praise those fathers who have died, but live on in our memory and whose love continues to nurture us. Blessed be. Okay. Now is the time to share your joys, concerns. Please let us know what's in your heart today. Yes. I have both a joy and a two oldest sons, uh, Jim, who's the visitor in that room. Uh, he is no quarter check. His grandparents came to Czechoslovakia after the war two. And his brother Scott, who was a security attorney. Uh, so the concern is uh, for the death of Brian Marshall, Captain of Recovery. And this is going to be a new He died last Sunday afternoon at the St. Louis Hospital. I was supposed to pick him up and bring him here to the 
Yes. Um, I just have to say that if um, trying to see people trying to tell the darling in the church, because um, she made Lisa's uh, drink uh, colder, and Eric got one, and Eric got one, and it's just like, I don't think you watch the church. Oh, you watch the church? Um, but I also think you watch the church. I think it's about similar age. So I'm just like, we're going to do that. The little girl who always like, you're going to crash the church. Yeah, yeah. Diane's mother always did a draft of her, so that's yeah. just not uh, really nice. She also lost her third team running towards the back of her and ran into the ball. Head on to the
You know what I mean? Something like that is to reach out and I felt so much joy this week. You know, and then you look at please reach out. You know, thank you. Amidst the pain and sorrows shared here this morning, may we find solace for ourselves and each other. From the light of the joys and celebrations shared here, may we find our hearts full of love. And for those words unspoken that remain in our hearts, may we find the desire and courage to lighten the load by sharing. Spirit of life, we're grateful for our homes and for the ability to gather even while we are apart. And we are grateful for this beautiful space in which we can gather together. We are grateful for the, for the power of sharing our thoughts, sharing our thoughts together with each other. Amen. Now please remain seated for our next hymn, number 123. As you decide what your offering will amount to today, think about how far you have come. In troublesome times when what's around the corner can be scary, you have had to learn how to do church in a totally different way. And you managed to do that for a full year, right? And you have succeeded tremendously in keeping this a virtual church and also keeping church in the sanctuary. That is because what isn't different is the love and the desire and the need and the joy found in gathering during the many years you have been together. Sharing the work makes, makes it possible as well as sharing the bounty. So please be generous today. <laughs> Thank you. 
And now rise in body or spirit for our next 10, number 203. Whenever Reverend Chopik conducted his flower communion in Prague, he would say this proverb as he consecrated the flowers. Infinite spirit of life, we ask thy blessing on these, thy messengers of fellowship and love. May they remind us among, amid diversities of knowledge and of gifts to be one in desire and affection and devotion to thy holy will. May they also remind us of the value of comradeship, of doing and sharing alike. May we cherish friendship as one of thy most friendship precious, precious gifts. May we not let awareness of another's talent discourage us or sully our relationship. 
but may we realize that whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us are needed to do thy work in this world. And now it is time for us to share in the flower communion. I ask that as each of you, as you each, each of you select a flower that particularly appeals to you from the base, quietly and reverently, with a sense of how important it is for each of us to address our world and one another with gentleness, justice, and love. As you take your chosen flower, noting its particular shape and beauty, please remember to handle it carefully. It is a gift from your own or someone else's garden. Even if it is from the grocery store that came from the earth, somebody grew it. It represents that person's unique humanity and therefore deserves your kindest touch. With silence, let us now share in this Unitarian Universalist ritual of oneness and love. Let's come forward.
And now may we have faith in life to do wise planting that the generations to come may reap even more abundantly than we. May we be bold in bringing to fruition the golden dreams of human kinship and justice. This we ask that the fields of promise become fields of reality. May it be so, blessed be. Mm -hmm. 